Hey everyone. So this video is going to be talking about lesson one five. Um, so this is more solving equations. We've looked at um, solving equations yesterday. Uh, today we're going to continue that, um, and we're just going to look at some more complicated um, or more involved uh, equations to solve. Our goal is still to solve equations uh, with one variable, so we're not, you know, having x and y. Um, we're just having one variable in there and then um, still trying to think about like, how does that order of operations um, relate to solving equations so you know yesterday we looked at um, that general process of solving um, an equation and so we talked about cleaning up both sides of the equation getting the variable terms on one side getting the constant terms on the other side we do this through adding and subtracting so this first step, we combine like terms and try to simplify each side of the equation. So the left the expression on the left and the expression on the right side of the equation. And then um, we use addition and subtraction in order to get the variables isolated. So we want that variable all by itself on one side of the equation. And we want the constant term on the other side of the equation. <clears throat> and then um, our very last step, and we don't always need to do this, but um, we need to get that variable um, all by itself. So we talk about a variable term, right? In step two here, this could be like three X or two X or one half X or something like that. That's the variable term. Um, in this last step, we're actually trying to get the variable all by itself. So we're trying to get X or Y or T or whatever the variable is that we're using, um, try to get that all by itself. And so we actually divide to do that. Um, we divide, or sometimes we call it multiplying or we multiply by the inverse. Uh, there's some different ways of talking about it, but um, and if we think about order of operations, right? We talk about we talk about um, parentheses, um, exponents, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Sorry, multiplication, division, and then addition, subtraction, right? Um, when we go to solve these equations, we're actually going backwards through that process. So first, we're doing addition, subtraction, right, and then we're undoing. Um, multiplication and division. So we're actually kind of undo um, all those operations that happen to a variable. Um, the process is still the same. Uh, we're just going to look at some more detailed examples. So um, in this example, uh, we solve this equation. We've got, um, you know, kind of a mess on, on the left side. The right side looks okay. It's just a 14 there. But this left side, we can definitely clean up. So um, I'm going to start by uh, just combining like terms here. Okay, so I can go inside the parentheses here and I can say, well, eight minus four. And so that gives me three X minus, and at this point, eight, eight minus four is four. Um, I don't really need those parentheses anymore. So I can just drop those parentheses um, or I can leave them in, like it doesn't really matter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and drop them here equals 14. Okay, so um, I've simplified that left hand side of the equation I can't combine any more like terms on the right side that's already simplified. I want to get the variable term all by itself and I want to get the constant term all by itself. So I have a constant term over here, there's no variables, but I do have a variable and a constant on the left hand side. So I'm going to get that variable term all by itself. So I'm going to get rid of this negative four. This is a negative four here, so I'm going to add a positive four. And then when I combine these together, I get 3x is equal to 18. Okay. And so I've got the variable term by itself. I've got the constant term by itself. Um, and now I just want to get X by itself. I want to get the variable all by itself. So I have three times that I want to undo that multiplication. So I'm going to divide by three, divide by three. And then I get um, X is equal to 18 divided by three is six. And then I'm just going to take one quick second here to check that. So if I have three times six minus, um, four right eight minus four minus four and that should be 14 and so i can verify that that's true so 18 minus four is 14. so i know that uh, i've got that right answer there okay the next one similar thing um 
another equation to solve. So the processes is the same always. Uh, we're gonna go through and first, can we clean up the left side or the right side? Well, in this case, no. I've got um, two unlike terms here, right? So they can't be combined. So there's nothing I can do to simplify that. And I can't simplify negative nine, it's already simplified. Um, so I can start getting those variables and constants um, isolated. So on this side, I wanna get rid of this negative five. Think of this as a negative five. All right, this is a negative five. So I got negative two X um, and then I got this negative five and equals negative nine. So I wanna get rid of this negative five. I wanna undo that subtraction. And so I'm going to add five to both sides. I'm gonna add a positive five to both sides. And then when I do that, I combine these together. I get negative two X. The fives cancel each other out. Negative five plus five is zero. We don't need to write that. And then negative five plus four. So I've got a negative and a positive. Um, so I'm gonna find the difference. So nine minus five is four. And since nine is the bigger number there, I'm gonna keep that sign. So I've got a negative four. So negative nine plus five is negative four. <clears throat> um, I've got negative two times X. Okay, again, don't think of this as subtraction. This is a negative number. This is a negative two times X. So to undo that times, undo that multiplication, I'm gonna divide by negative two. And I gotta do it on both sides to keep it equal. So negative two divided by negative two is just, is just one, so that's one X. And then on the right-hand side, I've got negative four divided by negative two. So I've got a negative number divided by a negative number, negative divided by negative is positive, and four divided by two is two. Two. So again, I'll go check that. So if I have negative two times two minus five, that should be negative nine. And so negative two times two is negative four. So negative four minus five or negative four plus negative five um, is negative nine. And that is true. So there's my check. Again, I could probably do this in my head, but you know, as these problems get more complicated, sometimes it's good to write them out and, and see, um, you know, just verify that you're actually doing it. Uh, also keep in mind that, you know, if you make a mistake in this check step, it might give you the wrong impression about your answer. So if I made a mistake in my check step and I came up with a non-true statement, I might think, oh, I'm wrong here. And I might go back and try to rework that problem. So you really wanna watch, your, um, watch yourself during those check steps. So example three, so um, again, a little more complicated. Uh, we've got a fraction here that we'll have to deal with, um, but otherwise it looks kind of the same. This is the same, I could write this as three halves times X. So three X over two is the same as three halves times X. So think of that three halves as a coefficient or the number in front of that variable. Same thing here, I'm gonna go try to clean up both sides. These are not like terms. This is a variable term and a constant term, so I can't combine them. This side is all cleaned up. I can't do anything there. So I'm going to move on to the second and third steps and let's get the variable term all by itself. So I'm going to get the three X over two by itself. So I'm going to subtract four from both sides to do that or add negative four. So when I combine these, I have three X. Oops. I have three X over two. And I, again, I can think of that as three halves times X. Um, and then the fours disappear and uh, eight minus four, eight plus negative four is four. Okay, and so now um, I need to get that variable term all by itself. Now, this one's a little tricky because we have a fraction there. So um, there's a couple of ways you can, you can deal with fractions. Um, in general, right, we're gonna divide. So we're gonna divide by three over two. Okay, we're gonna divide by a fraction. And remember that when we divide by a fraction, what we actually do is we flip that fraction over and we multiply it. So I'm gonna divide by three over two, but in order to do that, I'm actually gonna end up multiplying by two over three. I'm gonna flip that fraction over and multiply it. Sometimes we call that um, keep change flip. Um, but what we're really doing is we're, we're dividing by three over two, okay? Um, and I got to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to divide by three halves, which is the same as multiplying by two thirds. And so on this side, I get two times three is six and three times two is six. And so that becomes one. 
So that cancels out. Okay, so multiplying by that reciprocal or flipping it over and multiplying it, um, that's our way of, of getting rid of that fraction coefficient. And then on the other side, I just have to multiply straight across. So I think a four is a fraction. This is four over one, and I multiply the numerators together. Four times two is eight, and I multiply the denominators together, and I get three. Okay, now some people will want you to change that to, um, what is that, two and two thirds, right? Change it to a mixed number. Um, I prefer that you just leave it as an improper fraction. It's just one less step to do, and there's nothing wrong with an improper fraction, um, even though the name kind of implies that it's not proper. Um, it just means that it's not a mixed number. So eight over three, and that I wanna check to see if I can reduce that, right? But three does not go into eight. They don't have any common factors, so I can't simplify that, so that's my answer, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. So I'm gonna say three halves times x, which in this case is 8 over 3, <coughs> uh, plus 4 is equal to 8. Um, so there are a couple ways I could do this. I can multiply straight across. I'd get 24 over 6. But I notice I have a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. So this 3 and this 3 will actually cancel each other out. This is 3 divided by 3. This is 1. And on this side, I have 8 divided by 2. So uh, eight divided by two is just four. So that actually worked out really nicely. So I have four plus four equals eight. And so I'm pretty confident that that answer is correct. Okay, and then our last one, um, we've got a number of steps here, right? So this is actually more than two steps um, to solve this uh, equation, but the process is exactly the same. So, uh, Left-hand side of the equation, I can't simplify that to unlike terms, I can't combine them, but on the right side, I can combine those. So I have 2 thirds X, or I could also write that as 2 X over 3, minus 3, and then uh, 6 minus 2 is just 4. Okay. Now, notice that this problem now looks really similar to the last problem that we did, all right? We've got a fraction in the front here. We've got this constant term here that we need to move. Um, and we'll have to divide by a fraction here in order to, to get that. So kind of think ahead here. We can kind of anticipate our steps. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this negative 3 to get the, um, to get the variable term by itself. Oops. Plus 3. And so I end up on this side. I get 2 thirds x. Uh, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and then on this side, I end up with 7. So we've got the variable term all by itself. We've got the constant term all by itself um, on opposite sides of the equal sign. So now my last step is just to divide. So I'm going to divide by a fraction. I'm going to divide by 2 thirds. When we divide, we multiply. We flip it over and multiply. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 2 multiply by 3 over 2. And that's the same as dividing by 2 thirds. I'm going to do the same thing over here times 3 over 2. And so I get um, 6 over 6. Or I can look at this. I could say, well, the 3s cancel out and the 2s cancel out. So I'm just left with 1. Right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm just left with 1x. And then on this side, I'll turn that into a fraction. Multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21. And 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, I have an improper fraction here. That's fine. It's, uh, what, 10 and a half if I turn that to a mixed number? Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like it is. Um, and I also see that this is an odd number and this is an even number, right? So there's no way that I can um, reduce that fraction down. So, uh, so let's go over here and check this. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's go over and check this. So we have 2 over 3. So 2 thirds times x. And x, we think, is 21 over 2 minus 3 is equal to, and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Uh, 6 minus 2 is 4. And so when I go to check this, this, these 2s cancel out here. OK, so that just makes 1. And then I have 21 divided by 3. 3. So 21 divided by 3 is 7. So 7 minus 3 equals 4. 
And so I can tell that that's going to work out. So I'm pretty sure that that, um, that that answer is correct. All right. So take a look at the um, at the homework uh, for section um, one dash five, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.